right, what's up people? We are back in action. We've relocated the business down to North Devon. So we're cracking on down there and we had to head up back to the Midlands to pick up the last of our tools. So while we're here, yeah, a mate of mine, one of our old clients, has asked us to do a little bit of work for him. So you might actually recognize this project from if you've been watching us for a few years. Yes. It's one of our first big, well, our first full design and build projects. So yeah, it's awesome to be back. Have you seen we've had a working plan to go off? I think Jack's shown you the visual madnesses. Yeah. The similarities. So this is the project we've... Whoa! 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 <laughs> Wait for it. The classic. Double reality. What are we up to today? What are we up to today, Gregster? Uh, the, the screen. Screen. So, <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to be fixing a horizontal timber screen to cover up this ugly brickwork. I'm not sure if we'll be doing it this time, but there's plans to re replace the fascia, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I guess we'll call it a how-to video. How to build a horizontal timber screen to a masonry substructure. Sounds official anyway. So you might be able to see those, giving it a little coat. So all of our cuts and then the rear side of the timber, so the side of the timber that's going to be up against the, the brickwork that's all getting coated in a waterproofer. You ready, Rexter? Yeah. Let's do it. We've got our string line, so that is the finished height of the wall. So we've got our end frame on. So we're just going to screw every single vertical frame to the brickwork. So there's our other frame, that end string in between. So now we only have to worry about one, one level dimension. So we are staggering the joins as usual. So we're going to go through a three stagger screen. We'll show you how we fix to the wall now. It's pretty simple. Seven and a half mil screw, masonry screw. So the thread's just slightly different than a normal screw, a bit more sturdy. And then we've got a six mil drill bit and that seems to be super tight. When you're fixing, I like to try and get onto as much of a full brick as possible. So you don't end up in a join, you don't end up splitting the brick, anything like that. So yeah, tiny little details and then I'll just swap it to hammer setting so you don't chew up the timber. So yeah, the top and bottom was actually quite solid bricks, but you can see that one pop through a little bit. Not using resin for this project, whereas we usually do if you're fixing the full full concrete blocks, stuff like that. But you'll see here it pulls in really nicely. So it wouldn't, if, if the fixing wasn't solid, it wouldn't pull into the timber. So yeah, that's solid. And then by the time we've got our top rail, bottom rail, be sturdy, sturdy. So uh, vertical frames. So our next step, we're going to sh shoot on a top rail and a bottom rail. So if there is, say in years time, there is a certain weak point, that, that would just be spread out through the strength of the rest of the vertical timbers. So just a little bit of time for a lot of future proofing. Anyway, it looks pretty cool, eh? We always like to pre-drill, I just hate splitting timber. Bottom rail. Yeah? Yeah. Let's do it. So if you've been following us a while, you may or may not know that when we do the timber screens, we don't like to have the join every other one. 
So we like to stagger it over, over three. So that's what we've been doing here. So this is the top rail, but that would effectively be a batten. So then you go up full, full, and then you join. So you can you can alternate, or some people just run it right the way down, then you can cover the join up with a batten or something like that. But this is the way we like to do it, and we find if you stand back, this joins. Remember, this is all going to be sanded and oiled, but the joins kind of disappear. But yeah, but I guess one con is it takes a little bit longer. You do have to figure out your measurements. So here's our cutting list. So for the three battens or three runs. Alright, so Matt, from the time lapse, we changed it up again, so I wasn't happy. Yeah, because we, we did ask for 50mm by 25, we've ended up with 38 by 25 Some of them, we've got one pack of 50 so we're mixing that in. Nice little bit of detail. But yeah, some of the battens over the 1.1 or 1 .1 span, I just wasn't happy with it. And over time, I was worried it was going to bow. So what we've done is just chuck a sort of a middle rail in, in between. So now the spacings will be about 550. Yeah, so it's not fixed the wall, it's literally just fixed our top rail, bottom rail, and then we're shooting them, you can see. So now Greg's like sorting out the spacings in between. So we've got the exact same space we used, and he's just sort of creeping the battens up where they need to go. Good in the sun. Then you've got it. New timber screen, horizontal timber screen, shot off in all its glory. So yeah, this is what we've been using to shoot the screen up with. So second fix nailer. We've been using a bit of Milwaukee cordless. But more importantly, these are the fixings. So we've gone for a straight brad, because we, we have a straight brad nailer. But yeah, so we like to use 50 mil stainless steel. Definitely want to go for stainless steel, A for the longevity of the fixing. B, it's not going to rust out and you'll have streaks of <coughs> streaks of orange running down the timber but mainly mainly for the future proofing. I think the beauty of, of this type of screen is you can't see any fixings and you can barely see the joins. Where are they? Staggered. So that's why we go for the triple stagger. You really can't notice it. Anyway, on to the next steps. Sounds. You might notice they're still just hanging on. So did that because I didn't want to tr trim into the timber. It's quite visible coming up the stairs. Just set the depth of the blade like half a mil off the full thickness of the batten. And obviously pretty straightforward spirit level, scribe your line. Cut them off. So the reason we did that is it just saves. So these would have ended up being full battens or full cuts. So one of our cut was like a 2.4237 something. So instead of doing do, cutting it twice, we just chucked it up and then it's a lot quicker just to trim it off at the end. Alright, now the final step to any any timber project really, but certainly the screening. 
boiling. Boom, look at that. Look at the difference. Oh my my. That's mad. So yes, we oil all the timber, A, to protect it. So this is a full waterproof coating. And then B, it saturates the timber, so it really highlights the grain. Much nicer coloration, in my opinion. This is the method that we found is certainly the quickest. Paint roller and tray. There's our timber oil. What we use to coat it, we like to use nothing but the best. Well, we get heaps of questions about what we use. That's what we use. So it's UV protection, we've gone for the clear one. That's what we usually go for down there. But yeah, Osmo do do a, a wide variety of colours. So if you've been watching us for a while, you might have seen that we like to do accent buttons. So if you put that for like an anthracite grey, just even four or five buttons on the screen, it, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Alrighty, so that's the end of the How To Horizontal Screen Masonry Edition. Hope you enjoyed that. Our little trip to Stafford has come to an end. We're jumping back in the Matabo wagon, heading back down south and continuing to build the business down there. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, as usual, leave us a comment below. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Whole bunch of videos being edited as we speak. Um, so, yeah, plan to do one a week, get back on the roll. Matapo 2.0, baby. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.